For years, United Launch Alliance stood as the Pentagon's most trusted rocket builder, carrying national security satellites, NASA payloads, and commercial spacecraft without major disruption. Backed by Boeing and Lockheed Martin, ULA enjoyed a near monopoly on U.S. government launches, while its workhorse Atlas V and Delta YV Heavy reliably delivered mission after mission. By the early 2020s, the company was preparing for a smooth transition to its next-generation Vulcan Centaur rocket, aiming to meet growing demand from the Space Force, Amazon's Project Kuiper, and other clients. On paper, the roadmap looked solid. Retire aging rockets, bring Vulcan online, and keep the launch cadence steady. But that transition was not smooth. Vulcan's first flight slipped nearly four years past schedule, and its second test in late 2024 suffered a strap-on booster problem that forced months of review and pushed military certification into 2025. In the meantime, Atlas V flights were hit by last-minute scrubs, Delta IV Heavy flew its final mission, and ULA's total annual launches dropped to just three or four, far below projections. Those delays have already cost the company high-profile missions, with the Space Force shifting GPS and other payloads to SpaceX, and analysts warning that ULA's launch rate and reliability image are at their lowest point in decades. Why is America's once-dominant launch provider struggling to keep pace, and what could this mean for its future against rivals like SpaceX and Blue Origin? Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss full breakdowns of space industry's innovations. The story of ULA's current troubles really begins with its decision to retire its two legendary workhorses, the Atlas V and the Delta IV Heavy, while betting almost everything on a brand new rocket, Vulcan Centaur. On paper, it was a smart future-proof move. The Atlas V had been flying since 2002, Delta IV Heavy since 2004 and both were expensive to operate, compared to what SpaceX could offer with reusable Falcon 9 boosters. Vulcan promised to fix that. Cheaper, more powerful, and able to handle everything from small satellites to the heaviest national security payloads. But there was one huge problem. Vulcan was late. Very late. By the time 2023 arrived, it was already years behind schedule largely because its brand-new BE-4 engines from Blue Origin had run into repeated development issues. That delay triggered a chain reaction. With the Delta IV Heavy down to its last few scheduled flights and Atlas V production winding down, ULA's launch capacity was shrinking fast. This was an operational issue and a financial time bomb at the same time. Every missed launch meant lost revenue, and the risk of breaching contracts with high-profile customers like Amazon's Project Kuiper and the U.S. Space Force. The company went from a position of being the Pentagon's go-to launch provider to one that had to explain why critical satellites were sitting on the ground months past their planned liftoff dates. For an industry where timing can decide billions in military or commercial returns, this was no small embarrassment. By 2023, the slowdown was painfully visible. ULA launched only a few times that year, a shock for a company that once dominated U.S. launches. Instead of rolling out mission after mission, it was caught in a holding pattern. Vulcan wasn't ready, Atlas V was nearly retired, and Delta IV Heavy's end was already scheduled. That meant every time Vulcan's debut slipped, the hole in ULA's launch calendar grew wider. Customers began quietly moving missions elsewhere. Some commercial payloads switched to SpaceX. Others were delayed indefinitely, and with fewer launches came fewer payments, hitting ULA's revenue hard at the exact moment it was pouring money into Vulcan's development. Finally, in January 2024, Vulcan took its long-delayed first flight. It was a relief, and the launch went well. For a moment, it looked like ULA might claw its way back into the game. But just nine months later, the October 2024 certification flight went wrong. One of Vulcan's strap-on solid rocket boosters partially detached during ascent. Although it was not a catastrophic failure, it was serious enough to force a months-long investigation. That investigation pushed Vulcan's crucial military certification into early 2025. 
And without that certification, ULA couldn't fly some of its most valuable missions for the Space Force. Two high-profile payloads, USSF-106 and the classified USSF-87, were delayed. Space Force officials, usually diplomatic in public, openly called Vulcan's performance unsatisfactory and said trust had to be rebuilt. Meanwhile, the old rockets were still causing headaches. Delta IV, heavy bowed out in April 2024 with its final mission, leaving Atlas V as the only operational launcher until Vulcan was certified. But Atlas V wasn't immune to trouble either. In June 2025, engineers spotted dangerously high temperatures in an engine purge line just before liftoff of Amazon's second Project Kuiper mission. The launch was scrubbed and postponed indefinitely. This was a commercial embarrassment for ULA and a logistical nightmare for Amazon, which is relying on dozens of satellites to roll out its broadband network. By mid-2025, the launch numbers told the story of a company losing momentum fast. SpaceX had already launched more than 60 times that year. ULA? Just three. And each delay had a price tag, in lost launch fees and penalties from contracts and in the confidence of customers. The U.S. Space Force had already reassigned some GPS missions to SpaceX. Commercial operators were signing deals elsewhere. And every time Vulcan sat idle, it was burning money without bringing any in. What made this even more damaging was the scale of ULA's commitments. Between Amazon's Kuiper contract, NASA's Starliner flights, and dozens of national security launches, ULA had more than 70 rockets worth of missions on its books. To meet those obligations by 2027, it would need to average over 20 launches a year, more than triple its pace in the years prior. But with its backlog growing and technical issues still unresolved, that target looked almost impossible. Analysts were already asking if ULA could afford to keep going without new investment or even a change in ownership. On top of the technical mess came a financial squeeze. Bloomberg Law reported in 2024 that budgets were running over, revenues were down, and key engineers were leaving for SpaceX and Blue Origin. The Air Force began enforcing contract penalties for late launches, adding to the strain. And in the background, rumors of a sale wouldn't go away. Boeing and Lockheed Martin, ULA's parent companies, were reportedly exploring option, with Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin frequently named as a potential buyer. From 2023 to 2025, ULA went from being America's most reliable launch provider to a company fighting to keep its customers and its reputation. Technical delays slowed its flagship rocket. Financial penalties and lost contracts chipped away at its stability. And with rivals like SpaceX setting new records every year, the gap between them only widened. For a company that once owned the launch market, it's been a stunning fall, and the next few years will decide if it recovers or becomes a cautionary tale in spaceflight history. While ULA wrestled with delays, budget overruns, and frustrated customers, SpaceX was moving in the opposite direction, faster, cheaper, and more reliable than ever. The contrast couldn't have been sharper. In the same time Vulcan was struggling to get certified, SpaceX was flying at a pace the industry had never seen. Dozens of missions in just the first half of the year, with some weeks launching two or three rockets, that kind of cadence gave it a huge advantage. Customers knew their satellites could be on orbit within weeks, not months or years. And because Falcon 9 boosters are reusable, those launches cost far less than ULA's expendable rockets. The result? SpaceX could underbid ULA on price and still deliver sooner. Reliability played an equally big role. Falcon 9's track record speaks for itself. Dozens of consecutive successful launches with no major mission failures in years. That history made the Pentagon increasingly comfortable handing more missions to SpaceX. In 2025's Phase 3 Space Force Awards, SpaceX scooped up more than half of the contracts, leaving ULA with a much smaller share. Even high-priority GPS satellites and the secretive X-37B spaceplane, missions ULA would once have considered untouchable, shifted to SpaceX. SpaceX's ability to control its supply chain also mattered. 
While ULA was dependent on outside partners like Blue Origin for engines, SpaceX built nearly everything in-house. That meant fewer bottlenecks, faster problem-solving, and more freedom to adapt schedules. Combined with an aggressive testing culture and rapid hardware turnaround, SpaceX kept climbing while ULA stalled. By the end of 2025, the numbers told the whole story. SpaceX wasn't just ahead. It had redefined what ahead means in the launch business. And unless ULA finds a way to match that speed, reliability, and cost efficiency, it risks being left behind for good. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.